It's the week of November 12, 2018, and you're listening to the Missouri Growing Point Agronomy Podcast. I'm your co-host, Pioneer Field Agronomist Jamie Farmer, and with me today is a special guest series with our very own technical product manager, Bill McClure, and product agronomist for Missouri, Ryan Schmidt. Bill and Ryan, welcome to the show. We're happy to have you here. Glad to be here. Good day to everybody. Thank you for having us, Jamie. So really, Nick and Scott and Shannon and I all thought that it would be good uh, to have just kind of a quick podcast here this week discussing how Pioneer goes about making advancement decisions and choosing that next Yield Hero product that you guys would be seeing in your lineups here uh, next year. So I brought in the two guests that their role directly centers around that particular task. Uh, So if you could just quickly discuss a little bit, Bill, um, what it is that the technical product manager does with Pioneer and specifically with us here in Missouri. Yeah, well, Jamie, the uh, role of the technical product manager is kind of a dual purpose role. It's a fun job. But in my line, I get to work uh, closely with the field agronomist on agronomy type things. So I work with yourself quite a bit, you know, where we coordinate agronomy uh, projects from across regional areas and even North America, quite frankly. But the other part of the role has a lot to do with um, managing the product lines for the area. So uh, anything, you know, we grow in the area that we sell within a Pioneer bag usually comes across the work job that I get to do with regard to advancing products touching uh, uh, the research side and making sure we're hooking up with the sales side but it's all about you know making sure those products work and working closely with Ryan Schmidt here our product agronomist evaluating and kicking the tires on these new products yeah and that's a good point so Ryan you know Bill mentioned there that he works pretty closely with you on on advancing products and making sure that we understand what we've got as far as a solid product lineup so just discuss a little bit your role and specifically what you do for for growers and sales reps here in Missouri. Like Bill mentioned, my role is really focused around product advancement as a product agronomist and really the local testing using our impact plots within the state of Missouri. So you mentioned impact plots. Some of the growers and customers and folks out there may have heard us talk about impact plots before or impact locations and looking at different products and that. So could you explain a little bit for maybe some of those that aren't familiar with what our impact plots are, kind of what that stands for and what we utilize those for? Yeah, impact plots is actually an acronym for intensively managed product advancement, characterization, and trade trials. And that is how we go about testing a large number of products in an efficient manner locally. Yeah, so uh, maybe a little bit more on the impact um, process itself. Uh, And really, when you think about the scope that this uh, testing environment covers across North America, we have uh, roughly a thousand impact locations across North America, and that's corn. On the soybean side, we're looking at probably north of 700 impact locations. Um, We do them with other crops as well, but the bottom line with all this is to be able to position these Uh, products better locally and these impact trials are grown on a local farmer's um, field and that way we get uh, the experience of what they're seeing and needing in that local environment to uh, you know evaluate these products. That's a good point Bill. So talking about you know getting local data on new products and trying to make educated advancement decisions for that specific local environment. Ryan I know you guys you don't just go out there and necessarily pick the best fields to put impact locations. You want to get a pretty good representative sample of the type of environments that we're going to face here in Missouri. So you explain just a little bit on how those plots are placed and kind of what goes into tail for, for an impact plot to be set up and harvested and that sort of thing. Sure. Well, I think one of the most important things about impact or one of the best things about impact is the fact that we test a lot of different types of environments. Every area is very diverse especially in Missouri here, we have a lot of different yield levels, different different environments and things like that. And with impact, we can go out and we don't target just the best ground. We have some that are on the best ground. We have some on some tougher ground. We're not looking to tell every cooperator that we work with that we're not necessarily looking for your best acres to put the plot on. We're looking for the most consistent. And then we also look for different yield levels. We look for different management styles. We'll end up at the end of the year, we'll have some corn on corn, we'll have some rotated, we'll have some with fungicide, some without. You really get a nice mixture where we can tease out really what is the best product in each area under which management styles to be able to pick the right product for the right acre. I was just going to say, Jamie, one of the things, and to, just to understand exactly what Impact is doing, 
Uh, when, when you look at evaluating products, it's gotten to the point anymore that it's a function of numbers because really we're looking at uh, in a corn impact plot, for example, there could be a hundred different entries in one of these trials. There's a few benchmark products, but there's a lot of experimentals that all hope to become a new pioneer product down the road, you know, in a, in a year or two. Um, so that's part of the, what uh, Ryan, of course, is doing and the other product agronomist is to position them and understand how they're working, try to find a few of the road ditches and uh, essentially cull out just the best products. It's a function of numbers, but there is a lot of science that goes into it, and that's really how the impact plots have helped us uh, the last several years to become and bring those best products to the marketplace. One other important piece I'd add to that with impact plots is we've gone to multiple years of testing within impact plots, and we all know that the growing season for the year plays such a huge part in what we see within product performance. And by going to multiple years and seeing those different genetic by environment, by weather type and interactions, we really do a better job of picking them the best stable product over multiple years. That's a good point, you know, to be able to look across multi years and multi location. I know that's something that we stress for growers uh, not to tunnel in too much on a product decision based on one observation in one year. And so it always seems to make good sense to do that when it comes to an advancement decision as well. So fellas, could one of you just explain a little bit on maybe how this process starts for a particular hybrid as far as, you know, from the advancement process and the timeline that it takes, or at least the processes that it has to go through to get to where we start to see a named product in a customer's field? Yeah, let me maybe start with that then, Jamie, because I think whether you're talking corn or soybeans or even sorghum for that matter, it's roughly the same. Uh, you know, for uh, example, corn, you know, it starts at the research side. So the research scientists are building the hybrids, they're connecting inbreds and, and you know, considering what parentage might be the best combinations to, to make and bring and uh, starts in their plots essentially. And after that third year of testing of a new hybrid, uh, the ones that are, of course, the best, you know, that look the best to them and the traits look about right are handed off through combinations of decisions with uh, the TPM, as which I am one, to uh, make the cut to enter into the impact testing side of the business here. So at the R4 stage, that's that fourth year of testing, uh, we'll start testing them in impact. We'll build the experiments, put the hybrids in place, add in benchmarks for the maturity zone, and, and start to assemble what we see will be a good test um, to put into the impact uh, plan for that coming year. And essentially that's when uh, we start to develop the plans and hand it off to the product agronomist to decide locations and uh, where to place them and the environments and things like that. That's a good explanation, Bill. That's a pretty lengthy process there for a hybrid just to, I guess, really even make it to the impact location. So, Ryan, once, say, a product does, an experimental does make it to that impact location, what's sort of the process for you once you take that experimental on as far as implementing that in that impact location from start to finish and then the advancement process afterwards? Really from where Bill left off, it's all about local product observations. We plant the product, obviously, and then we spend a lot of that growing season just taking observations all, on all of the products, including versus the commercial benchmarks. One key thing we do is stand counts. We're using UAVs to take stand counts, which, are, which has made us more efficient and really sped up the process. But also during the course of the year, we have a lot of different agronomic factors and traits that we try to characterize while we're able to look at the product and the impact plots. Things like windstorms, there's, there's occurrences where you get some opportunity observations such as a windstorm that might cause some root lodging or stock lodging late in the year that we take we take advantage of. We do all the planting and we do all the harvesting but we ask the cooperator we work with just to treat the plot like he treats the rest of the field. So in the end we'll come in and we will harvest. We'll have all of that observational information on each product through from during the course of the year then we'll have the harvest information as well. And so then once you get all this, all these data points in from these impact locations, and you talked about utilizing some of that technology there uh, with the UAVs to be able to help create uh, more data points and, and more accurate observations, that's a lot of data to look through. So what's that process like, say, after harvest, whenever you know, you've got everything laid out on the table here? Are you just looking at particular plots here in Missouri? Or are you looking outside of the area, too? And uh, who else? is involved in that evaluation process as far as which one makes the cut yes so the the uh, it's a good question and it's it is a lengthy process i mean there is a lot of data 
because when you consider all the hybrids you're looking at in a given plot, there's a lot of points to consider, and not, and not just yield. But ultimately, it uh, boils down to a function of uh, the product agronomist, the, the tech team side, the research side, getting together, um, kind of hammering through that data, and ultimately culling out the products that don't look like they're going to fit the bill. But uh, there's always that good handful that we move to the next level, and... I mean, ultimately, it comes down to finding those, uh, you know, four or five products in a given uh, area that we think are going to be good enough to, to wear the pioneer name, advance the product, and launch a new hybrid. It's kind of an exciting process, and we're at that point of the road right now in the, in the calendar year where it's usually, you know, mid to late uh, November when uh, new products will be uh, launched or at least uh, numbered, and we'll start the process. So it's, it's that time of year. Yeah, it's exciting time for us as well on the field agronomy side because we always look forward to, from a field agronomist perspective, seeing you know what products are coming and uh, really visiting with Bill, uh, you know, our technical product managers as well as our product agronomists like Ryan, and trying to figure out you know what exactly these hybrids are going to be able to do for us, where we're going to be able to place them, uh, the benefits and advantages that they bring to our lineup. And so that's exciting for us. You mentioned this time of year, we're getting ready to see that. So we're always curious to see what's coming down the pipe. And it's almost like Christmas for us. You know, always looking for that next great yield hero out there. So it's a fun time. One of the things that really the reason that we thought we'd share kind of this advancement process is just some of the advantages that this brings our sales professionals with Pioneer Sales Rep, as well as our customers that are planting these hybrids. The confidence that I feel after seeing this stuff come through multi years of observation and to be able to know, okay, these are the road ditches for it, and this is where this product's really going to shine, and the proper acre to be able to put that hybrid on. And so, you know, just talk a little bit about the improvements you've seen with us going to impact here within the recent years and the, the advantage that you guys now have from an advancement process. Well, I think Bill hit on earlier is impact is a great way to look at a large number of products because the research pipeline is producing a lot of potential new products. So it allows us to widen that funnel, look at more products and the local testing. I think there's a lot of there's a lot of diversity across the whole corn belt and every area has different needs and different wants and deals with different weather and different environments. And I think it really helps us find on a local basis what is the best fit, what's that pot- best potential new product that gives you the best combination of yield and agronomics for any particular area. Yeah, and that's a good point, whether it's with corn or, or soybeans or sorghum, like you mentioned. We've, we've got impact testing for all the product lines that we that we hit pretty heavy here in Missouri, especially on the corn and the soybean side there. So, Jamie, you asked the question, what's in it for the customer, what's in it for the sales rep? And I think when it all boils down, it's, it's about the confidence, um, especially with our sales reps, when you're selling a product that uh, you know what it's all about and you can position it appropriately with your customer. What's in it for the customer? It's just as important for them to feel confident that, you know, my sales rep knows what's up and what he's talking about, what she's, you know, understanding about these products. So that's important. And in in a lot of cases, these impact plots are planted by, or at least uh, hosted by some of our customers. And for those, if you're listening, we want to thank you for allowing us to do that. Uh, We learn a lot through, um, uh, use of your ground a little bit, but hopefully you're learning a lot and getting some benefit from seeing these products firsthand too. So I think that's that's kind of what it's all about. Yeah, that's a good way to finish it up there, Bill. You know, we definitely thank uh, our cooperators out there. I know whether or not it's with impact testing or with some of the, the PKP plots, product knowledge plots that we put out there on a lot of cooperators as well to help us kind of fine tune some of those placement decisions. That's a lot of collaboration between us and our growers. And that partnership really helps all of us as far as being able to advance uh, the growth and potential of each operation and and the products that we're putting out there. So, again, we just wanted to thank you guys, Bill and Ryan, for taking part in the podcast today. Uh, We know you guys are busy right now with advancement decisions. And for all of those listeners out there, we thank you for your time and we thank you for your business. It's always important for folks to know where to find us. So if you're 
looking for the podcast, the podcasts are podcast.pioneer.com. And you can also reach out to your Pioneer sales professionals and get signed up for those Walking Your Fields newsletters and other timely agronomic info delivered to your inbox. So with that, we thank you for your time. We thank you for your business. And we look forward to speaking with you again.